Our scripture lesson comes to us this day from the New Testament book entitled Ephesians. Paul was writing to this new Christian community in the, the city of Ephesus, located in what we would think of as Turkey, the country of Turkey today. One little bit of trivia about our scripture lesson this morning is that in English, when the translators translated it into English, they translated it into several sentences. Why is that interesting? It's interesting because when these words were written in Greek, it is all one sentence, the entire passage. And I say that because I think it's fascinating to engage it, understanding that as Paul was offering these words about God's blessings and about this understanding that we have an inheritance from God, it was almost as if he got so wound up, so excited, so filled with praise that he just couldn't stop himself. And so we're going to read this in English, but where you see a period, Paul didn't stop there. As you listen, I invite you to reflect on this question. How does Paul think about inheritance? What did he have to say as he was thinking about the inheritance that we receive from Almighty God. I invite you to stand for the reading of God's word as it comes to us from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Okay, get ready. He's going to start, and here we go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us in adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he bestowed freely on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, in Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance. Did you hear that? In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. And there Paul put a period. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. 
There are so many stations on cable TV that I'm not sure there's any one that I watch with particular regularity, but I don't know if you're like me. Sometimes when I finally have a minute to sit down, I end up doing some kind of channel surfing, and I'll land on one that looks particularly interesting. And one that I have run across a couple of times is a program called Strange Inheritances. Have you ever seen that one? It is really kind of interesting because on this program, they feature people who have either inherited something that was really unusual or they have inherited something that takes them on kind of an unusual journey in trying to deal with it. So, for example, one program I watched, this man had inherited from his father 250,000 Indian arrowheads. Now, I mean, seriously, you thought dealing with your grandma's china and flatware was an issue. What would you do with 250,000 arrowheads? Or um, then there was this woman, in her will, she was bequesting a $1 million home and a six-figure trust fund to her dog. I mean, that must be some dog. I don't know, Alan, is that one of your clients? No, no? I, don't, I have to talk to Dale McKee about that. Um, and as I thought about it, perhaps if we're honest with ourselves, we have all had those times when we wondered if there was any large outside chance that we might be the beneficiary of some amazing, unexpected inheritance. But have you ever considered that you are, in fact, the greatest beneficiary of the greatest inheritance of all. And that's what Paul was talking about. He just couldn't stop talking. He couldn't find enough words to express his feelings about the richness of the blessings and the inheritance that are ours that come to us through Jesus Christ. You are in the will, and that's the good news. God has claimed you for his own. He has adopted you. He has called you his child. You are his sons. You are his daughters. And for those that have children or grandchildren, and you think about what those children and those grandchildren mean to you, that says something very profound about the understanding that we are not just believers, we are not just disciples, but you are one that God has claimed. You are one that God calls you as his child. He loves you as, you as his child. He sacrifices for you in the same ways that we sacrifice generously and amazingly for those that we love. Even before you knew God, God knew you, and God had a plan for you. Being accepted by God and called as his child has nothing to do with what we actually do. You know, venturing into this kind of theology, and this is deep theology. The passage that we read today is probably not one that rolls off the tip of your tongue. And it's one that sometimes we don't turn to because it is very dense and it is deep and it is 
profound in its meaning, and yet it is everything. And it is also often hard to preach from because Paul covers a lot of territory. It's almost like a systematic theology. And so when we begin to think about what Paul is teaching the church at Ephesus and us, it is a systematic theology. It's a lot of ground to cover. But sometimes, as a pastor, we have to stop and say, I hope they drank their coffee and I hope they got a good night's sleep because we need to venture into this and unpack this a little bit because this is the profound nature of who God is and who God calls us to be. He knew you before you were born. He calls you his child and was willing to sacrifice everything to the point of going to a cross that he did not deserve, a cross he could have avoided, but he loved you so dearly that he was willing to go to the cross to pay the price of atonement, to pay the price for the forgiveness of your sins that we might be reconciled to Almighty God. Or, as it took me many words to say that, Paul says very profoundly, if we had jumped ahead to the next chapter, he would have said, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And that matters as we live and we grow up in a very conditional world where so often we are approved based on the work we do. We are approved by the way we look. We are approved by how we live our lives. The world can seem very conditional. God's love for you is unconditional. And our salvation through him is not based on what we do. It is based on our faith in Jesus Christ. Because if we're honest, if if I were to be measured by God based on what I do, I would be in a whole world of hurt. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And so... It is through this faith in Jesus Christ that we receive this spiritual inheritance that comes from God and God alone. You are in the will by faith because of God's love for you. And so we think about this idea of inheritance. You might say, well, Pastor, what is this inheritance that I have received? Why does it matter? How does it make any difference in my life? Well, On the one hand, what we can say is by our faith, through God's grace, we receive the inheritance of eternal life. It is the promise that God gives that death never has the last word. As Christians, we do die, but Paul would say we die to sin. We die once and for all to sin, and after that there is no more death. Oh sure, we will shed this body when the day comes, but that shedding is just a passing through which we must go to be with God eternally. When we die to sin and come to faith in Jesus Christ, then we receive our inheritance from God which is the gift of eternal life. But I think there is another way to look upon this inheritance, for the inheritance that is ours through Christ is not just in the future, but it is an inheritance that comes to us in the presence. When we have faith in Jesus Christ in the present, we inherit the knowledge that we are loved by God, We inherit the knowledge that we are forgiven. And I'm going to borrow a phrase I was, uh, I ran across and I forgot to write down the writer. But he used this phrase, he says, we come to know a God who is gracious beyond the wildest reaches of our imagination in this life. Through our faith, we have an inheritance in the future 
but also an inheritance in the present. As I was thinking about this, what came to mind was that Jesus told a parable about inheritance. And you know it. Jesus told a story one day about two sons. You remember that one? First of all, we had kind of this bozo younger brother. And often it is this younger brother that so much of our attention seems to be focused on. You know how it goes. He went to the father and he said, Father, give me the inheritance that is mine. And out of love, the father did. And what did the son do? He went off to Las Vegas. And he wasted it all away, didn't he? And then the story tells us, though, when this son had reached the point of desperation, and just when he finally in his heart comes to the realization that maybe he needs to return home in that moment of turning while he's still far away, Jesus' parable tells us something about God, doesn't he? He says that in that moment, the father picked up the skirts of his robe, started off the porch and down the path. And that's important. That, that part of the story matters because a lot of the time that's me. But what came to my heart was the elder son as I thought about inheritance. Do you remember how that part of the story went? The younger son gets home, the father throws the biggest party that the village has ever seen, and the older son is upset. Because what does the older son say to the father? He says, I can't believe you've done this for this bum of a brother. And I want to read what he said because this is really profound. The older son says, For all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, and you've never given me anything. Do you remember that? And I thought to myself about this whole nature of inheritance. Here is this older son and the way he describes his relationship with his father was what? He said, I have worked for you like a, a slave. Where was this son's joy in the present? Where was this son's joy in being with the father? And to me, the heartbreaking response comes from the Father, God, who says, My son, I have loved you all along. You have always been with me, and all that I have is yours. One son took the inheritance, and he wasted it. But one son received the inheritance and he ignored it. Both sons in this story had actually received what God had to offer. But sometimes I squander it and waste it. And other times I completely ignore the inheritance that is all around me each and every day. That God is loving me now. That God is forgiving me now. That God is blessing me now. And that God says to us, I am with you always, and all that I have is yours. Will you pray with me?
Lord, this day help us to thank you profoundly for the promised inheritance of the eternal life that is ours, that can help us to never fear earthly death, which will never have the last word. And you promise to us the gift of eternal life. But help us, Lord, strengthen our faith to be aware that your inheritance is ours even today as you fill our lives with good things, as you surround us with your love, that you offer our forgiveness. Lord, this day we praise you and we thank you, and it's in your name that we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.